Hey guys, in this C-sharp how-to video, I'm going to show you how to create a program that computes the MD5 hash sum of a file on your computer. Not only will this program compute and display the MD5 hash sum, but it will also update a progress bar while it is hashing the file. This is currently the first and only video tutorial on YouTube that I know of that shows how to implement the progress bar as well as hashing the file. Most other tutorials here just show how to compute the hash of a file with no progress output. This is okay in some cases, but let's say you're hashing a file that's 4 gigabytes. That's going to take at least 25 seconds, and during the time it's working there will be no progress output to the user, and the form will just sit there. And that's if it's implemented well, because if it's not, the form could even be frozen while it's being hashed. In this video I will show you the correct implementation of how to hash a file and report its progress to the user. Let's get started. Let's go over to Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, create a new project, I'm going to call it Progress Hasher. Let's set up our form. So we're going to drag it like that. Go to our toolbox, we need four things. The first thing we'll need is a background worker, so just double click on that. We're going to need a button, we're going to need a progress bar, and we're going to need a text box. Just line them up however you like, I'm going to do it like this. Let's change the name of the button just to compute. And that's the button we're going to click to compute the hash sum of the file. And the file path we're going to type into this text box right here. This will be the progress bar that will be updated while it's hashing the file. The first thing let's do is click on background worker once. We're going to go over to this properties tab and we're going to choose worker reports progress. We're going to set that to true. So just double click right there. The next thing we're going to do is set up our methods. So click on this little events tab. We're going to double click right here in the do work. Let's go back here. Double click in the progress changed. Let's also go back and double click on the run worker completed. And the last thing we have to do is double click on our compute button. And we're going to fill out this first. So this is what happens when the button gets clicked. All we're going to do is run the background worker and we'll call this method right here. So the code for that will be background worker one dot run worker async. And what we're going to do is pass the text box text into there because we're going to pass the file path. So it's going to be textbox1.text. That is all for the button click method. Now we're going to write the code that actually hashes the file. The first thing we need to do is get the file path from that argument. So we're going to get a new string, and I'll call it file path. And we're going to set it to e.argument.toString. And that will get what we passed it since we passed textbox1.text. The next thing we need to do is set up four local variables. So the first is going to be a byte array and that's going to be our buffer. This is what we're going to read parts of the file into and then hash those parts. The next one is going to be an int and that's going to be called bytes read. And we're going to have a loop in here and that's going to get updated with the amount of bytes that were read every time through the loop. The next one is going to be long and it's going to be called size. This will hold the size of the file we are hashing. And the last one is going to be a long as well. It's going to be called total bytes read. And this will hold a count of the total amount of bytes that have been read so far. Next, we have to go up here and add a using statement using system.io. This will allow us to use this stream class so we can read the file. We're going to do a using stream, and I'll call this file. And we're going to do equals file.openread, and we're opening our file path. Put an opening and close bracket right there. The first thing inside this bracket we want to do is get the size of our file. So we're going to do size equals file.length. And that will set size equal to the file length. Now we need to go up here and add one more using statement. It's going to be using system.security.cryptography. And this will allow us to use the hash algorithm class and the MD5 class. So we're going to set up another using statement using hash algorithm. And I'll just call this hasher. And it's going to be equal to MD5 capital MD and 5 dot create and then open and close bracket and inside here is where we'll actually do the hashing of each part of the file so we're going to need a loop so we're going to use a do while loop so I'll just put there the do and the brackets and I'll put a while and inside the expression I'll just put true for right now uh, we'll fill that in later the first thing inside the loop is we want to initialize the buffer to a new array so a buffer equals new byte array and we're going to read 4096 bytes. The next thing we're going to do is read from the file. So we're going to set bytes read equal to file.read 
and I'll tell you why we set bytes read to that in a sec. The first argument we need to send is the buffer that we want to read the file into. So it'll be buffer since we already set that up. The offset is where we want to start putting that file into the buffer. So we want to start at the beginning, so zero. And then how many bytes do we want to read? Well, we want to read buffer.length because that's how big it is. Now file.read returns an integer of how many bytes were actually read. So that's why we want to save it into our bytes read variable. The next thing we're going to do is update total bytes read and we're going to add the number of bytes read in that loop to it. The next thing we want to do is actually hash those bytes that we just read. So we're going to do hasher.transform block. And this is going to take quite a few arguments. So the first one is the input buffer. That's what we want to hash. So we just read into the buffer, so we're going to pass the buffer into it. And the offset, well, we want to start at the beginning, so we'll hit zero. In input count, we want to tell it how many bytes to hash. So, well, we just used bytes read to know how many bytes we just read, so we're going to pass that in there right there. Now we can also output that hash into an output buffer, but we aren't going to do that, so we're just going to type null and then zero right there. Now this while statement, we want to have this loop while the bytes read is not equal to zero. So what happens if we get to the end of the file, but we go through this do statement again, it'll read some bytes, but oh, we're at the end and it won't read anything. Bytes read will be zero, so it will break out of the loop when we want it to. And after the while loop, we need to transform the final block. It'll basically put all the hashes together and create the real hash. So hasher.transform final block, and it's going to take three things. The input buffer, we're just going to pass it the buffer again. We're going to pass zero for the offset and zero for the count because we didn't read any new bytes. And then we're going to set e.result equal to hasher.hash. One more thing we're going to do inside the, the do while loop is call the method to update the progress bar. So what we're going to do is background worker one dot report progress. What we need to pass it is the percentage that we want to update the progress bar to. So what we need to do is pass in an integer and then we will get the percentage by dividing the total bytes read so far by the size of the file. So we're going to first cast this as a double and we're going to do total bytes read divided by size and then multiply it 100 to get an even percentage and that will update the progress bar once we filled in that code. Now that report progress call calls this progress changed method. So all we need to do in here is progress bar one dot value equals e dot progress percentage. And that's all we need to do to update the progress bar. The second to last thing we need to do is write the code for what happens after it's done hashing the file. Well, in this case, we want to show a message box that just shows the hash of the file and then changes the progress bar's value back to zero. So we're going to do message box dot show and we're just going to display e dot result dot to string and that will display the hash in a message box. And then we'll just set the progress bar value to zero. Now the last thing we have to do is notice hash right here, that returns a byte array. Well, natively you can't just display a byte array dot to string. So we're going to have to write a little helper method here that converts this byte array into a string. So let's write this underneath our do work method. Oh, we'll call it private static string make hash string. And we're going to pass it a byte array. I'll just call it hash bytes. The first thing we need to do is create a string builder. I'll just call it hash equals new string builder. And we're going to pass it the number 32. That is the initial capacity. Well, an MD5 hash is 32 characters long, so that'll be perfect. The next thing we need to do is do a for each loop and loop through each byte in that byte array. So for each byte, and I'll just call it b in hash bytes, what we want to do is hash dot append. This is going to append to that string builder. And we're going to do b dot to string. And inside that to string parenthesis, we want to type quote capital X two end quote and then parenthesis. And then I like to do dot to lower because I like my hashes lowercase. That's just a personal preference. You can do two upper or whatever you want. And then all we need to do is return hash dot to string. Then up here we should update this, the, set the result to make hash string, and then pass it that byte array. And then it will return a string of the hash instead of the byte array. It's now time to test this. Let's go back to our form and run it. So right here we type in our file pass. I'll just type e downloads, and this is the path to a 4.4 gigabyte file. This is the iOS SDK and Xcode IDE for programming iPhone applications. So let's compute this.
And there you go, that's the computed MD5 sum of that file. That's all for this tutorial. Please hit the like button if you liked it, and subscribe if you want some more, and I'll see you in the next one.